Hey, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 199 of the Spears Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and fuck, man, we're almost at 200. That's crazy. We're going to do a live show to celebrate. Oh, that's right. COVID-19, bro. So instead of doing that, what I'm going to be doing for episode 200, I want you guys all to be there. We're having a celebration virtually live on my YouTube channel next Sunday. I will be streaming the podcast directly to my main channel, not the podcast channel. The uh, podcast will be uploaded later to the feeds and all that kind of shit. But I want as many people as possible to see this. So to celebrate episode 2 fucking hundred of the Speared Sundays podcast. We are live streaming it, so fucking be there. Grab your snacks. All that bullshit ready. I'll be streaming on my main YouTube channel. I would love to see you there. I'm going to post on my socials the date and time. Um, but uh, it's going to be great, man. It's going to be fucking awesome. I've just uh, properly set up the studio here so we can live stream from the studio because previously the internet in my house was great, but in the studio, very shit. So I got this fucking crazy Wi-Fi mesh extender thing that cost a bunch of money. Shout out to the Patreon supporters. They get every episode early and there's a new fucking mug. Check that shit out. Uh, and now I can stream from here. And everyone was yelling, Oh, you shouldn't be streaming over Wi-Fi. All right, bro. I'll just run an Ethernet cable fucking 25 meters through a brick wall in my fucking rental just to listen to your tech advice. I bet that's going to work. I'll have great internet, but I won't have a fucking house anymore, will I? Huh? Let me... Uh, when I own a house, then I'll do that Ethernet fucking fiber to the premises bullshit. Right? But right now, I don't own this shithole. Not that I would want to own a place in Frankston. So I'm going to use fucking Wi-Fi. And you know what? When it turns out that every one of you comes was correct, and the whole episode 200 is ruined because it doesn't stream properly, I will be very angry and I will blame no one, especially not myself. I'll just yell. <laughs> so episode 200 is going to be fucking great. I'd love to see you there. And uh, send in your miscellaneous bit at the uh, end questions to podcast at Um I'm going to be saving up all the fucking bangers. I'll do an extra long one for episode 200 because I know how much you cunts love that. So, man, what's been happening? Dude, am I the only person that just doesn't give a fuck at all about this new Keemstar drama. I think I'm over it. Love Ethan. No hate towards Ethan. I've always respected what he does and what he does still to this day. I think he's a fucking OG and a legend. But I just don't give a fuck about Keemstar. And I also don't understand why anyone would defend him. Not against the allegations that Ethan has made... I just don't understand why anyone even thinks that he's worth defending. Not in the integrity sense, just in the respecting the work that he does. Do you know what I mean? Like, even if he didn't do all that doxing shit and all those racial slurs, which is trolling, if we're being fair, and even if he didn't all even if he didn't do any of these horrible things that he's been accused of, the cunts 40 plus with children running a YouTube drama channel about 15-year-old TikTokers cheating on each other. It's unrespectable. You can't respect it. It's just laughable. The dude looks like a fucking gnome. He's over 40, and every day he wakes up, jumps on Twitter and goes, which prepubescent TikToker has cheated on another prepubescent TikToker? I'm going to talk about it, and I'm going to call it the news. Keemstar is just... Even less respectable TMZ. And that's not to hate him. I'm just saying there is nothing respectable about the shit that he does. I mean, I sit in a chair and scream cunt. And that's more respectable than what he does. And what I do is not special. I'm just screaming and being a fucking idiot on camera and telling you about all the dumb shit I did in the last six days. This cunt's fucking going on... 
YouTube to a few million children telling everyone about what fucking YouTuber tweeted a subtweet about this fucking YouTuber and calling it the news. It's unrespectable. Can't respect it. Couldn't be me. I, I just think that it's very... I just think that the thought of Keemstar doing anything is just funny. Like Keemstar at the shops, that's funny. You know why? Because the dude's 40 and he runs a YouTube drama channel. That's incredible. If I hit 40, right? If I hit 40 and I upload a YouTube video to my channel talking about two fucking 18 year old kids from different countries with a few hundred thousand subscribers having an argument on Twitter. Hey, shoot me in the face. If I ever do that, get a gun and shoot me in the face because I've lost it. <laughs> if I ever do that shit, I've lost it. And I think the funniest shit about Keemstar is the fact that he has kids and those poor cunts have to go to school every day and their dad's Keemstar. And I'm sure he's a wonderful father. I'm sure he loves them and I'm sure he's an incredible father. But imagine if he was your dad. Even if he was the best dad ever. He's obviously a millionaire. You probably have a fucking sick Christmas. But does a PlayStation 5 really make up for all of the kids at school going, bro, your dad's Keemstar? That's fucking shit. <laughs> That's funny. Lol, your dad's Keemstar. I don't think so. No matter how good my dad is, if he ran TMZ for YouTubers, I would disown him. I'd rather be an orphan. Let's be real. Do I want a PlayStation 5 or... Do I want a dad with a normal job? I'm going broke, normal job every day of the week. And I make my money from YouTube. So I'm not even that much more respectable at all. But it, for God's sake, at least I'm not fucking 40 with kids talking about fucking YouTube drama. Oh, shit. That's exactly what I'm doing right now, except I'm not 40. Jesus Christ. I just think it's funny, man. I think that that, that dude is is just funny to fuck with. From the from the the minute I started writing that video, I think I might have been one of the first people to do like a big video about Keem and it for it to get like a few hundred thousand views. I think I even did it before the H3 one. I did it before the content cop. I was like one of the first people to do the video. And from the minute I found the cunt online, I was just amused. And I was like, this is going to be funny. I'm going to laugh at this man. And he is going to get very angry. And that's exactly what he did. And that's exactly what the cunt's been doing for the last fucking, what, five years. Ever since I discovered the dude, all he does is just yell at... You know what he does? This is Keemstar. He just turns on his fucking camera. He jumps on Twitter every single day and he goes, Please take me seriously. <laughs> oh, please. Please respect me. Please take me seriously. It's just funny, man. I just think he's funny. And he can keep doing what he's... There's, look, there's nothing wrong with what he's with what he creates but it's undeniably fucking hilarious that this dude wakes up like imagine waking up every day and just looking at what fucking 10 year olds are doing incredible couldn't be me thank god for stand-up dude because you know what without stand-up i've really like i mean my life is the life of a youtuber right now Sucks, bro. I'm I'm not not a fan, really. Really not a fan of... Own I love making YouTube videos. I don't like only making YouTube videos. Like, it's always part of the fucking plan to become a big stand-up comedian, to move and conquer the States and, and, and become this big fucking thing and, and get as good a stand-up as possible. Uh, but if, if I wasn't doing stand-up, dear, dear God... I would be sad. <laughs> because right now, I'm not going to lie, feeling pretty sad. This sucks. I miss it so much. But at the end of the day, at least I'm not running a channel called Drama Alert. That's just, just funny. I don't know how anyone looks at Keemstar 
and just and and he, what he does and his business and they just don't laugh. That's hilarious, undeniably funny. Whether you respect the guy, let's let's put all of the allegations aside. The idea of a forty-something-year-old father, who's like seems to be like five foot three, one hundred fifty kilos, literally looks like a caricature of a gnome. Bald as fuck, but wears a cap, dresses like he's ten, and reports on people who are five years older than what he dresses like. Fifteen, TikTok cunts dancing and cheating on each other. That is objectively funny. If you don't think so, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> oh man, it's just I just every time there's a new Keem drama, I'm just like can't wait to watch this cunt fucking rage. He really fumbled the comeback, huh? He can't not be angry. Ethan does a great video, very funny, made some cool points. Uh, I thought the going after sponsors thing. I'm on the fence about, but I also realize that that's mainly because it scares me. Um, but the response that Keem made, he was like, all right, I'm going to be angry for 20 minutes. <laughs> and that's every time. He's like, all right, I've been attacked here. I could come up with some valid points, but instead of that, I'm going to be fucking angry for 20 minutes. And then behind the scenes, I'm going to dox you. And that's, Awesome. That's just funny, bro. That is absolutely hilarious. He's like, all right, someone has made a 40-minute, well-produced, well-made, researched and edited video about me and my character to assassinate my brand. Instead of taking all of these points and structuring a response, I, 45-year-old Keemstar, am going to take a break from reporting on the uh, personal relationships of 15-year-old children on TikTok to be angry for 20 minutes. And then I will upload that and literally think I won the argument. <laughs> it's just funny. I just think he's funny, man. I just think that he's very cute. You know, there's nothing cuter than a, than, than a dude getting angry. Isn't it? Isn't it good? I just think it's funny, man. Anyway, what did I want to talk with him? Um, Oh, yeah, that's that's some shit. That Joe Rogan stuff. Joe Rogan leaving YouTube. That's huge. Classic Lewis Spears trashing another man for reporting on the happenings of YouTube and then going, right, now, now let's talk about the let's talk about literally that. <laughs> um Nah, shout out to Keem. Love you, mate. Please unblock me. Are you gonna unblock me? Can't tell me block for five years. Every time he unblocks everyone, he makes sure to re-block me. I really ticked him off. I think I really was one of the first to really get under him and cause a big backlash. And that's a, that's a badge I'll wear, to, you know, to the end of my days. First cunt to make Keem real mad. <laughs> oh, man. So, uh, Joe Rogan leaving YouTube. That is huge news and i think it's really really good i think it's very fucking good news if you're unaware joe rogan biggest podcast in the world obviously a gigantic portion of those views would be youtube i mean that's how i exclusively uh consume his podcast is on youtube um and he just signed an exclusive deal with spotify and he was not on spotify at all um he was not on Spotify at all, but now he is. And he signed an exclusive three-year deal licensing his podcast. Uh, so what licensing means is Spotify has not bought Joe Rogan the business and they don't own the podcast. They don't even own the episodes that he will make for those three years. They are literally licensing it. Like how uh, in Australia, Channel 10 can have Friends reruns. They have licensed Friends in Australia there. They don't own friends. They don't own those episodes. They get to play them on their channel and make money off them, uh, but they don't owe them, own them. And that's for a limited time. So it's like he's licensed his podcast to Spotify. They get the podcast and they are the only people that get to play the podcast, but they don't own it. They don't have any creative control at all. 
There are no employees on his podcast, but they have to pay $100 million at least for Joe's podcast. That is a fucking boss cunt move. Oh, I love that. Because that eliminates any censorship worries. Uh, that promotes podcasting the art form as a whole, this huge news and Joe moving to Spotify. Because at the moment, um, here's why I think Joe did it. Because Lord knows he doesn't need the money. When I met the guy, I got a whiff. You know when you're around someone who has money and you get a whiff and like they say something that's just normal to them and, and it goes in your head and you go, you don't even know what you just said makes you stand out from the population so much you might as well be a fucking alien. You know when, when that happens, like when you're around, you, it's very rare, but you, when you meet someone that has so much money, they don't even know what a lot of money is. You, like when they, like, I don't know, a million dollars is an insane amount of money. But when people move past that point, they don't even realize like how much more than a million they have. Do you know what I mean? Like when, when cunts truly have wealth, they don't really understand what that looks like to the average person. Now me, average person, I meet Joe and he says, I go, uh, would you ever do shows in Australia? And he goes, yeah, look, I've thought about it and I liked it when I went there, but you know, even if I was doing arenas, I, I, would, I would just lose money because I'd have to stop doing stuff here. And I was like, oh, this cunt's making so much money that making money would cost him money. <laughs> that's, that's money, bro. When I make money, I make money. I don't lose it. When you get to a point where you go, oh, I could make money, but that would cost me money. So I can't do that. Because the amount of money I'm making here is so ludicrous that making money there would hurt this. That's money, right? You know, I just got that whiff and I was like, oh, cunt stacked. Okay. So, so the estimates is that he's gotten paid $100 million for this deal. Now, I think it's way more because articles have come out and said that, that Joe one year made $30 million in one year. Now, if I'm making $30 million and somebody wants to like scoop up everything that I produce, I'm already making 30. And if you're going to potentially lessen my audience, this is like the ninja moving the mixer. You have to pay me minimum double, minimum double what I would have made without you. Minimum to eliminate that risk, right? So I'm thinking it'd be like, 150 like as a base rate plus bonuses for downloads people signing up to see joe rogan uh and a bunch of fucking bonuses and targets that if i hit i get ownership of that's what i that's the kind of deal i'd be signing not that i would ever be making money like that but it's really interesting for a few reasons, and I'm going to get into a bunch of them because I'm fascinated by this shit. So Joe, on on Joe's perspective, I think he's done it not really because money. I reckon he would have done it if I was in, in his position and from listening to him. The dude sounds super frustrated with how much YouTube censors any creator, even someone as big as Joe. Like he's, he had to stop live streaming the show because stuff kept get taking kept kept getting taken down. He had to. He's always worried about what things he can and can't play. Even though a lot of the stuff that he would be doing, like if you're reviewing footage, that fits in uh, fair use. But he just never shows shit on screen that he's watching. Whereas a, a podcast like the H3 podcast or even my videos where I'm critiquing a movie or a TV show, I'll happily show shit. But if your, sh if, if your stuff gets taken down and you're Joe Rogan, that's so much fucking money that you lose because, you know, the, the sponsor has paid you to be in the episode. Your episode gets taken down. They want their hundred grand back or however much they've paid, you know, as, as they should, I suppose. So... I think he's been real frustrated with, with how much YouTube has censored and forced him to alter what 
his idea of the podcast is. And uh, a big thing is, I think he recently mentioned that he wanted to have uh, medical experts that had differing views on how to handle coronavirus that differed from the WHO, like the official things. And we all know how the official things can be trusted, right? World Health Organization. Oh, there's no evidence of human to human transition. Transmission. Human to human transition is more of a Caitlyn Jenner situation. You know, it went from Bruce to Caitlyn. Sorry, you can't dead name Bruce. Bruce never happened. Who won, who, who won all those fucking men's events? I don't know. Didn't happen, right? <laughs> so I, I think that it is such a fucking brilliant move from Joe because if, if I was in his position, firstly, fill up that fucking bag, Spotify. Fill it up, cunts. Make it full. That's number one. Number two, you don't get any say in anything that I do ever. You don't even get to hear the episode before it goes up. I would have that in there. And then, uh, according to Alex Jones, I read an, I, I don't watch his show, but I read an article Apparently Joe did his show. This might be bullshit, but but Alex Jones is in the contract saying like, I can have incredibly controversial guests, including people like Alex Jones, bing, 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 all that kind of shit, right? So Joe's basically gone from making stacks of money, but also kind of less than what he should with all of the YouTube demonetization and also the live streaming being t turned off, all that super chat, those donations, all gone, right? So making stacks to making less than what he should, jumping over to Spotify, he now is guaranteed money, plus the ads that he would be making, plus all the touring, all that kind of bullshit. Fuck money, who cares? But now he's not going to be censored. He is on a platform that has invested money into him, meaning it is in their best interest that his show succeeds youtube if joe rogan fails who gives a fuck they don't care i read on twitter the the baby shark song has more plays on youtube than all of joe rogan's podcasts combined so who gives a fuck in the scale of things joe rogan makes them a lot of money but ultimately he's fucking droplets into the giant bucket that is youtube's bank vault who gives a fuck if they lose them from a monetary perspective that being said i hope and i think this will scare the fuck out of youtube and really shock them into realizing if you fuck with and censor creators and comedians and YouTubers, po po political people, eventually a platform with the nuts is going to host them. And a platform where you pay money as the standard has the balls to host controversial stuff because the only people that uh, you can complain to if you're offended is the host and all the host has to say is fuck you whereas if Joe Rogan has you know Alex Jones on his platform and everyone gets really angry they can complain to Toyota they can complain to Microsoft to this that all of these giant companies that are advertising on YouTube not on Joe Rogan just on YouTube and their ad might show up on Joe Rogan shit they can complain to YouTube and YouTube is beholden to their advertisers I mean it's like the Keemstar shit you really want to hurt the hurt the dude? Aim for Gene Fuel, G Fuel, you know. Aim for the head, the G Fuel cap. <laughs> so now Joe is in a position where he doesn't have to appease the platform, whereas before he was. Spotify know what they've bought, and in their contracts it would have said these are the rules. You can't fuck with me. I'm going to do exactly what I want to do at all times and you can have the show for three years and that and it's now your problem any backlash uh, you know what if i was in a position of power like joe rogan i would even put in there you cannot 
take my show down or any episodes down at all without paying me this much. And if you take it down, I'm free from the contract and I keep the money. Just so that if controversy happens, which obviously it will, now Spotify will be the number one target of everyone. Whenever anything crazy is said on Joe Rogan's podcast, Spotify takes the hit. Now that's fine if Spotify stand up for it and then nothing happens, which I think is the future of businesses in today's world, but only if they are not beholden to advertisers. And that's the main difference between YouTube and Spotify is the standard for YouTube is to just watch it and turn ad block on. They have a paid option. I, I use it because I, because I think it's a great feature. You can play videos when you lock the screen and also creators get paid fairly even if they're demonetized. They still get my YouTube revenue, uh, which is way higher than even if you click an ad. My play gives the creator more money because I'm paying an actual amount per month and that month gets split up over who I watch. So that's why I like it. But I'm a rare person. I like that because I'm a creator. Do you know what I mean? Um, so the standard for Spotify, however, is to pay for it. Most, I, I think, anyway, most people who have Spotify pay for it to get rid of the ads because you can't turn ad block on with Spotify. That's why a lot of people were angry at Joe when he moved because Joe goes, hey, Spotify's free, which it is, that's true. Uh, but everyone goes, oh, it's not free, you got to pay for it. It's like, no, no, no. It's the same as YouTube. If you want to get rid of ads, you have to pay for it. You're just angry because you can't turn ad block on on Spotify. That's why you're mad. You're not it's it's free. You just have had ad block on for so long you forgot what seeing an ad in the middle of the video was. You don't even know what that's like anymore. <laughs> so I I hope that So what I was saying was it's in it's now in Spotify's best interest for Joe's platform to grow. So what are they going to do? They're going to push it in front of every fucking algorithm. Every cunt who logs on to Spotify from day one is going to be like, look at this new podcast. I mean, you saw it when the Misfits podcast signed that deal with Spotify. They made a bit of money. You know what I mean? And then, you know, because Spotify have paid money to get this podcast, it's in their best interest that it does well. Otherwise, they've wasted their money. So, bam, they start fucking blowing up their numbers, putting Misfits podcast in front of everyone. And then... It, it does grow. So that's what's going to happen with Joe's. He might lose a giant chunk of audience, but eventually they're going to come over because they're going to miss that shit. So it, it, it is... What I hope happens is I hope it makes YouTube... It's not going to make YouTube sweat monetarily, but what I hope it does is I hope it makes them realize that there really are other avenues coming it's not available to the average person so for me if youtube kicks me off i'm fucked i'll have this podcast but ultimately i will be fucked because i'm just not that big on other platforms and i can't do the types of videos i would want to do on other platforms it just doesn't work you know a 10 minute yelling fucking rant video that's comedy and sketches it just doesn't really work on igtv and it certainly doesn't work on TikTok, right? And Facebook's fucking dead full of boomers. But that shit is kind of stepping up. And when Spotify adds video, which they are doing and they've announced that they're, that they're doing, they're going to add video for podcasts and I imagine that it will be just for select people because they don't want to pay for the hosting. It would be really expensive. That door is going to open up a little bit more to start bringing over YouTubers. I mean, it's not that insane to think that when Spotify perfects the video podcast experience and everyone is used to watching video on Spotify, they will soon start to be like, hey, you know what? PewDiePie, why don't you do scare PewDiePie with us? YouTube doesn't have the balls to do it. We'll do it for you. It's not that crazy to think that in the next five, ten years, Spotify is going to start doing that shit. And that's going to make YouTube shit itself. I think the world is coming to a point where 
One, people are starting to realize that outrage doesn't really mean anything. And two, consumers are starting to realize if they want specific niche or controversial content, you have to pay for it. Not much. You know, my Patreon's three bucks a month at a minimum. If you really like my shit, I mean, you're going to support it because I'm not making money on YouTube and other avenues. The only way I make money is off ticket sales, which is not YouTube and Patreon, right? So if you want the type of stuff that I make, a lot of people are starting to realize, oh, I need to pay for that shit because nobody else will. And me paying for it enables the guy that I like to spread his wings. Like straight up, if I didn't have Patreon, my content would be so fucking different. I, I mean, you notice I don't really say g'day cunts at the start of a YouTube video that much anymore. And it's not because of the money. It's because if I do that, my videos just get limited. The reach of them is limited. It's just little shit like that. Now, I can still do all of the fuck stuff within those videos, but I have to save it for a little bit later into the video. And without Patreon, I wouldn't be doing that shit at all. So I, th I and I think the same goes for like niche nerdy stuff. Uh, I mean, you, you're seeing it with fucking porn. If you like regular porn, you go get it on Pornhub. If you're into some freaky foot food stuff, you pay for that. If you like fucking weird hentai of cartoon characters that you should definitely not be making porn of, uh, you're paying for that shit, you know? There's, there's some stuff you can find free, but if you're into specific niche and offensive, people are starting to realize that they either pay for it to support the creation of it, or a company has to have the nuts to go... I don't give a fuck how angry this makes this group of people. That group of people love it. And that's who I would rather get my money from because they're going to support the shit I make. Whereas these people are only going to tear down and they won't support. So I hope that the Joe Rogan thing scares these businesses into thinking, fuck, we need to support creators more. And we need to enable funny and not even funny like Joe Rogan. I would say most of his podcasts are not funny. They're with doctors, scientists, experts, authors, philosophers, and they're talking about really difficult shit. I mean, even if you have a soldier talking about killing people or his PTSD or the wars that he's fought through, that shit doesn't fly on YouTube monetization wise. A small creator cannot do that shit and build a big platform. Joe's only here because he started pre-YouTube, got a huge platform, and then continued to grow. So I hope that it makes these companies realize they need to let people have a bit more fucking freedom and stand up to these advertisers and go, okay, Ford, if you don't want your ads on controversial shit, that's fine. But just know a lot of dudes buying Fords a 25-year-old men who love fucked humor. So you don't want to advertise to a giant selection of the population? That's your problem. And then they just wait. That's all they're going to do. It's fucking Google. They can afford it. When all that PewDiePie shit happened and all these advertisers pulled out, all YouTube has to had to do was, okay, see you in six months. And when all of those executives started to see sales drop and engagement drop and reach drop, while all of their competitors who continue to advertise grow, 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 they would have gone, oh, fuck, we literally have no choice. But that's my fucking rant about the state of the industry and entertainment and controversial stuff. I think... I think that the... I mean... It's, it's like um, Luke's, Luke made a really good point. It's like HBO, you know? Like a mainstream television network is not going to air a TV show full of rape and murder. But HBO will, Game of Thrones, because 
HBO doesn't care about advertisers. HBO cares about people paying for the service. I mean, the amount of shit that's on Netflix, like all of those stand-up specials, fucking Rick and Morty, none of this shit would fly <clears throat> on a regular free-to-air platform or YouTube. Like, if you tried to make... I know it's insane, but say Elon Musk wanted to spend a few billion creating a Game of Thrones-like TV show and put it out for free on YouTube. That shit would not fly. Because it would be too violent. It'd be have nudity in it. Do you know what I mean? Like, it just... If you're appeasing advertisers, you're limiting creative freedom. The only way to truly get that shit that you like is to pay for it and to get it on a on a um on a fucking uh not a system to get it on a network that will stand by its creators that's what i think so fucking good on joe rogan i think that's so cool and very inspiring i cannot wait to do his podcast that is a big fucking call but i'm gonna get there you watch me I'm going to fucking get there. I don't know him. I don't know any of his friends. I'm in Australia. I'm not successful enough there. But mark my fucking words, I'm going to be on the Joe Rogan experience in my lifetime. Maybe not yours, but definitely in mine. Calling it here. Episode 199 of the Spirit Sunnies podcast. I'm going to be on Joe Rogan someday. I fucking promise. And that's a promise for me, not for you. I'm going to do that shit. All right? Or the whole podcast will be fucking cancelled because Spotify will pussy out. Who knows? <laughs> All right. How long are we going here? Let's have a look. Oh, I need to plug my camera in. One second. All right, I'm back. Um, by the way, uh, quick uh, thing. If Can you guys let me know, Is this? does this look good? I've switched to the good camera, and this is the lighting and the color grade and the sound that I'm going to be using for as standard. So if you have any constructive feedback, if there's things you like, things you don't like, please do let me know. Comment it on the YouTube version so I can read it all or just send me a DM on Instagram. Uh, just your feedback. If it looks good, if you don't like it, let me know because I'm trying to perfect this now that I'm set up in the new studio uh, and all going forward. All right. Uh, I got one thing to talk about before I do. I just want to remind everyone that I got the, the uh, Patreon mugs that uh, just came out uh, exclusive to Patreon. If you support me at level four for three months, you get sent the mug. Uh, there's no shipping. None of that bullshit. And you also get a poster as well if you're level four. So like the first month you get a poster. The second month you get nothing. The third month you get the mug. So it's a cool way to get a cool thing. Uh, and that's the only way you can get it. You'll never catch me selling these. I don't even have one yet. I'm fucking fuming that I don't have one yet. But uh, I'll, I'll get one soon, I'm being told. So uh, if you want to support the show, we've got a Discord server as well. You don't have to do level four. There's fucking... I mean, the cheapest thing is three bucks a month. Goes back to what I was saying. If you want that real comedy, if you want that fucking... The shit of me not giving a fuck and saying what I want. Hey, Patreon's the only way that we can continue to do that shit and uh, continue the uh, extreme cost of doing all this kind of shit. Oh, that's one more point that I wanted to make with Joe Rogan. I'm not 100% sure, but with podcasting, so I know I know this for sure, with podcasting, you you pay to host the data. So for me, for example, my podcast, because it's not on YouTube and, and it's, well, it is on YouTube, but it's not like only on there. It goes out on all the podcast platforms. Every time you download my podcast, I have to pay for that to happen. I got to pay to store all of my episodes and I got to pay for the transfer of that data. So for my little podcast, not that big at all, maybe fucking 10,000 listens a week, right? Which is, you know, big, but it's not in the scale of things. It's tiny. That costs me like about $300 a month. Now, if you take that and you, and I think mine gets like 40,000 audio listens a month <clears throat> and that costs me about $300. 
a bit more than that because the US dollar is stronger. It's fucking shit. Now, if you scale that to what Joe Rogan was, 190 million a month, I mean, let's do the math now. How much would it cost to host the Joe Rogan show? So if I'm getting 40,000 and that costs me 300, let's call it 350 because it's going up, uh, 190 million, 19 million, 190 million uh, divided by 4,000. I think I'm doing my math right. No, four, divided by 40,000. 4,750 times 350 a month. Okay, that's definitely wrong. That's, that's only, oh no, that's 1.6 million. Fuck. A month. Now, it might be lower because, or it might be higher, who knows. But based off my stats, if I was that big monthly, I would be paying $1.6 million dollars to host my podcast and get it out to you. <clears throat> a month. So what is that a year? 1.6 million times 12 is almost... Tw so $20 million. So theoretically, not only is Joe getting paid $100, $150 million a year, plus all of his bonuses, he would also be saving $20 million because Spotify would shoulder that cost, right? I might be wrong, but that's what I think. So theoretically whatever joe's getting paid he's getting an extra 20 million in saved costs that's awesome how many of you cunts were shocked when it learned when you learned how much it cost me to get my fucking shit podcast to you cunts huh 300 dollars a month i man i thought i thought it was bad when i got it when i copped a fucking 50 dollar a month phone bill 300 dollars a month just for you cunts to listen to me say cunt and call you a cunt <laughs> I mean, right there, that's almost a third of my fucking Patreon money, isn't it? Anyway, guys, um, where are we? What did I want to talk about? Ah, there was one more thing. Fucking. Oh, yeah, that, I mean, if we're talking, this whole episode is going to be about the state of the industry address, isn't it? Dude, how funny is that Twitch trust and safety council shit? So... If you're out of the loop, I'll get you up to speed. Twitch, biggest live streaming platform in the world, right? And uh, I don't know, according to them, they have such a toxic community or a problem with harassment or whatever the fuck the reason is, they've set up a trust and safety council to help moderate the community. Now, let's be, let's do a little bit of image 101, Twitch. Never, ever call a group of people who control the expression of users, a trust and safety council. That sounds like it's straight out of 1984. Just call them moderators. That's all. They don't need a fucking fancy title. Anytime you give people a fancy fucking title like that, everyone in the world gets suspicious as fuck because it sounds too friendly. I'm a comedian, right? But imagine if my job title was, uh, I don't know, amusement ex expert. What is that? Everyone would see that amusement expert. What the fuck? I don't trust him. He's going to rape my kids. That's what people think when they hear like a name that sounds so special specially crafted to seem harmless it everyone we're not dumb that's a trap that's like putting up a big sign in front of a fucking mis like weird looking patch of grass that says not a death trap soft grass please lie and then you fall into it and you land on sticks covered in vietnamese man's shit and that's not racist, that's historically accurate. That's how they defeated America. Sticks covered in shit. That's got to be America's biggest L, huh? Who would win? The world's most advanced military with unlimited money or Vietnamese people with shit on sticks? <laughs> that's going to be a, a shining moment in the podcast, huh? 
I love my historical knowledge. It's just me simplifying incredibly complex topics into the dumbest and funniest sentence possible. <laughs> I think a good quote from me, I got a few comments about it. Uh, I think it was on a Luke and Lewis podcast. We were talking about governments and tyranny. And Luke was saying something like, oh, we have a good government. And I, I said, yeah, I bet that's what Germany thought. But then all of a sudden, Franz Ferdinand gets shot and we get Hitler. I, I just simplified the conflict that started World War I, all of World War I, and then all of World War II and the rise of Hitler and Nazism in a sentence that was dumb and it still made sense and was funny. That's not exactly a talent, but there is something there. Anyway... The Twitch Trust and Safety Council. Now, look, moderation, great idea. You've got to get toxic people out of your fucking communities, especially if your community is social media. It's a good idea to get rid of hateful people, I think, anyway. Um, <clears throat> like, And I mean like truly hateful people. Like if you're only on a platform to spread hate, you probably shouldn't be on the platform. That's kind of how I think. Now, if you have spicy opinions go for it. But if you're like explicitly like, hey, my name's John, I'm a Nazi, let's get rid of this race, off. You don't need to be on the platform, right? So I think moderation is a good idea. Starting up a council and calling it the fucking Trust and Safety Council is a dumb idea. So they get all these fucking moderators and Twitch's biggest problem seems to be they don't hire experts in their fields or people that are trained. They just hire cunts who use the website. It's not how it works. You know what I mean? Like, that's just not where you find your best people. Let's be real. You're not going to find the best person for the job in the comments section of a Twitch stream. Let's be real. Now, I'm not saying that smart people don't leave comments because I've read many comments underneath my podcast of smart cunts correcting the dumb things that I say. You guys exist. But I think we can all agree you're not incredibly active. Huh? Like you're not a you're not a pillar of the YouTube comment community. When you hire a pillar of any comment section, you're not hiring the best person for the job. You're hiring a fucking imbalanced loser. <laughs> because they have nothing to do, they have no skills, but they must be heard. Worst type of person to give any kind of power. Exhibit A. I can't remember her fucking name. Steph? I'm calling her Steph. If that's not her name, I'm wrong and I don't care, right? Steph. Just be glad I didn't say her old name. <laughs> so they hire Steph, right? They hire this trans woman. Let's be clear. Nothing wrong with that. Fuck who you want to fuck and... Turn your dick inside out if you want, or turn that puss into a fucking meat stick. Who gives a fuck? As long as you're certain with your opinion, and you're not doing it because of some other deep-seated mental issue, go for it, right? Trans woman they hire. Now, the woman is clearly mentally unwell. And not in the depressed way, in the fucking off her rocker way, okay? And I'm not even talking about how she's moderated the platform or things she's done in the past. I'm talking about right fucking now. This bitch thinks that she is a deer. Mental illness. You're not an animal. You can be a woman. You can be a man. Fuck it. You can be neither gender, but you have to be human. Let's draw a line in the sand today. You are not an animal. And you never will be. Sorry, that's a mental illness. Could you imagine if what I'm saying right now gets me cancelled in 10 years because the next generation is gender fluid and race fluid? 
Oh, it's not even race, is it? A deer isn't in a race. Oh, there's human race and the animal race. The deer race? I don't know. Species, that's the word I'm looking for. Hey! You can pick your gender. You can change the color of your hair. Fuck it. I'll even let you have a front fringe. But you are a human. And if you think that you're not a human, you have a mental illness. Let's be fucking frank. You know what? Don't be frank. I'm sorry if I've accidentally dead named you. I don't know what your name was before this, Steph. Let's be Steph. <laughs> If you think you're an animal, you're not. You have a mental illness. This bitch is on stream talking about how she eats grass. <laughs> Yo, ah, oh, fuck off. Sorry, camera died, I'm back. Bro, she's on stream. Talking about how she feels so much like a deer that she'll go out into her backyard and literally eat grass. And she wasn't joking. She eats grass from her backyard because she thinks she's a deer. I'm sorry. Mental illness. Let's be fucking real, huh? Are we not, are we not allowed to say that? Are we, are we really expected to look at another grown adult woman... Who's, and watch them say, I'm a deer, and we all have to go, oh, I guess you're a fucking deer. Dude, that's a mental illness. Don't let fucking Joe Rogan find out that there are elk working at Twitch. He's going to go out and get the fucking bow and arrow, start hunting. Like, dude, you can't advocate for trans rights and also be an animal because they have less rights <laughs> they really do like i mean i've never seen a deer you know advocate for housing or health care i'm not i'm not gonna get up and protest on the street to get fucking dental work for a deer you gotta be human bro that's fucking insane that you would look at a person who literally thinks that they are an animal and go I'm going to give you power. I'm going to give you authority over other humans. This bitch, what if she has no loyalty? She's not even a human, you know? I mean, if aliens invade, I'm siding with the humans, no matter what. She's probably off with the fucking deer. What if all those deer rise up and start oppressing us because we hunt them? That's fair. That's objectively fucking hilarious that Twitch have installed a trust and safety council and instead of researching the people that they've fucking hired, they just go for the first trans woman they see and turns out the cunts thinks they're a deer. That is awesome. <laughs> That's great. And what's even crazier than this bitch who thinks she's a deer, what's even crazier than that is, and I think this is a great sign of mental illness generally like full-on crazy crazy i'm not talking about bipolar i'm not talking about depression i'm talking about might stab you in the street crazy right she's wearing fingerless gloves all the time if you wear fingerless gloves you're nuts <laughs> that's and that's fact that is a fucking science. If you walk around wearing fingerless gloves, you're even crazier than the cunt who thinks they're a deer. If you think you're a deer and you wear fingerless gloves, guess what? Put them in a home. They're, they're gone. They are not sane anymore. That's it. If you wear fingerless gloves, I will cross the street to walk away from you. For sure. Oh, but what if I want to use my phone? Don't wear gloves at all. Either you're wearing gloves or you're not. You can't have both. Either you're a woman or you're a deer. You can't have both. Actually, you can only have one and it's the woman because you're a human and not a fucking animal. Who does this bitch think she is, huh? The new Twitch moderator is like that deer with hands from Adventure Time. <laughs> Ha ha ha!
You know that fucking deer that takes its hooves off and then starts going like this? <laughs> That's who they've hired. Twitch is awesome. That's so good. I love that. I think at, at some point, I'm, I love inclusivity and I'm all for it. Fuck who you want, be who you want, as long as it's human. But at some point, when we're going for inclusivity and when we're promoting that, we have to hire the best tranny for the job, not the first one with an inside-out cock that we see. Because if you keep doing that, you're going to end up with a bitch who thinks they're a deer and they eat grass in their backyard when no one's watching. Insane. Can we get a fucking tranny with a PhD, please? Get these bitches who used to be blokes into university, get some fucking PhDs and get rid of those Ds. Because currently... All of these businesses are trying to be progressive by picking the first cunt off the street who wants to get rid of their cunt, and it's not working. <laughs> oh, man. I wonder if I'll get tr in trouble for that. Like, actually, in 10 years, do you reckon I'll get in trouble for that? I'm sure there were a bunch of people doing the same rant, but saying you can't be a woman you're a man. I bet there's so many people that did that 10 years ago that had no idea th 10 years from then they're getting fucked, you know? Maybe that's maybe that is where the world's going. I mean, a lot of people are talking about this slippery slope and I was like, "Ah, that's fucking bullshit." But, you know, I'm sitting here today and there is a deer moderating Twitch, so <laughs> maybe they maybe uh, they're not right, but there's something in there. Oh, fuck. I would honestly like to know if you genuinely think I'm wrong. Can you be an animal? No. <laughs> Wuhan! All right, guys. I think I'm going to leave it there. I don't think I have enough time for miscellaneous bit at the end. I just... This deer bitch is so funny. They have a woman who thinks they're a deer. How can you think you're a deer and no? <laughs> it's a computer. Live in the woods, bitch. <laughs> you think you're a deer? Live in the woods. <laughs> oh, fuck. That's awesome. I love Twitch. That's fucking sick. Announcing the new Trust and Safety Council. Jim. PhD in economics. Mary. Expert in linguistics and social interaction. Joseph. PhD in psychology. Steph. Eats grass in her backyard. <laughs> All right, I'm going to stop talking about this. Guys, I'm going to end it there. Thank you very much for listening, watching. Uh, leave, leave a comment. How does this look? How does it sound? Uh, I, I'd be interested to know your feedback. And uh, support me on Patreon if you want early access to every single episode that I do. And if you want to fund 15-minute rants about why this bitch from Twitch is insane, because Lord knows... I can't put that shit on my YouTube channel, all right? I mean, I might. Let's see how the clip runs out. <laughs> Fuck, I don't know if I'm ready for the backlash for that one. But, um, yeah, if you want to support that real comedy, that real shit, and uh, help continue on with the mission, especially while I can't fucking tour and do that stuff, Patreon is the way to do it. Bunch of new rewards. We've revamped the, the page, and uh, it looks really good. So I'd love to have you on board. I'd love to have you in the Discord as well. Great fucking community in there. It's uh, really growing, really cultivating, and it's fucking... Very, very cool to see. I've actually hired a, hired a woman who thinks they're an owl to moderate it. So we'll see how that goes. Woo! All right. See you later, guys. Have a shit one. Oh, tune in for episode 200 as well. Because that's going to be fucking fire. I'm glad I got that out of my system before I fucking streamed it live to the world. Have a shit one.